Greetings. Oh, look, I put it up quick. Action activate. Gazbot. If it's me, then who, what, him? It is I. It is the big dog. Day three of Power Morph Con. We definitely didn't just do this, but I forgot to hit record. That definitely I didn't did say happen. anything. That was totally you. I am taking off this badge both metaphorically and physically. And literally. It's it's it's, it's done. done. It's done. So we're through it. First Morphicon, not including the online one where we ran the panels in four years. Yes. So before we get into the nitty gritty, having been there two years, four years ago, and two years before that, how does this one stack up to the three that you've been to? Um, I would say it's kind of a toss up between 2018 and this one, just from my experience of which one would be the quote unquote best I've been to. 2016 was good. There were a lot of cool highlights. I felt like honestly though, it was a little small. Um, and this was in the same place. So I had a good kind of like same base for it. Full of stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, and it, yeah, there were a ton of vendors. There were a ton of actors. I feel like each year that progresses mm -hmm. there, I feel like there's more actors there. I could be wrong, but and like that's how it felt the, between the two I went to for sure. Yeah, like 2018 and this one just stacked like a ton of people. Um, so much so that like I think so many Ranger actors are like unfortunately not there now. We've kind of capped because they have just other gigs they're at. Like Yoshi wasn't there probably because he's working somewhere. Uh, Ekadargo wasn't there probably because he's working. Like right. you know, uh, and obviously people. Uh, on current seasons and things are able to make it, but like not the whole Dino Fury cast was there because I was noticing that like, okay, go ahead, continue. Cause two of them, I believe had outside obligations. They didn't touch on it too much. So I don't know. I don't I think just, I saw in the panel, it showed the four of them. And it was like Dino cosmic fury cast reveal. And I, and I was looking at the pictures you were sending. Actually, let me, let me get this up. And I thought it was a thing at first where I was not seeing them. Like they were like behind someone else or whatever. There's your face. Hey. Uh, but then they did the morphing, and it was just the four of them. Yeah. These guys and these guys. And I thought – and then I thought, like, sometimes it happens where someone's running late because they're at another panel or they're stuck at a sign or whatever. But Russell Curry and somebody else – now I'm blanking. I forget his last name. Oh, uh, Blue. Yeah, but he plays Ollie. Those two were just not there. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. That's right. Um, but go back to the Cosmic Fury. So yeah. I posted a video last night. You yeah. posted the video this morning. We yeah. have not spoken about it. True. I watched your video. Did you watch my video? I did. Okay. Um, I We could talk to each other, but we both kind of – one. Oh, one thing I'll say on the top, and I will not take credit for this. Uh, and I wish I'm always – if somebody online somewhere pointed out, they just were like, huh, Cosmic Fury still has what looks like the T-Rex logo. Yes. Dino Fury. But – in Q Ranger, because that's the big thing now. Everyone's like, is it going to be Magic Ranger or Q Ranger, or not Magic Ranger, Kira Major or, mm -hmm. or Q Ranger? And there's other ones too, but everyone seems to have settled into it. It's got to be one of these two. Uh, and I want it to be Q Ranger, even if that's not the more logical and that's what I want. In Q Ranger, one of the secondary mechas is a big purple dragon, like a, an Asian style dragon mm -hmm. where it's like a serpent that has a head that kind of looks like that with like a, a, a goldish top. And somebody just put the two next to each other. And was you know didn't even say anything, but what the implication was like, oh, is this a way that they could still use that logo because that's not a T Rex, that's the Dragon Zord? And I thought that was compelling. I thought that was interesting. I I feel like after watching your video, you and I are on the same page. We both want Q Ranger, but mm -hmm. it's probably going to be Cure Major. I'll take it. I because I'm I, I'm I'm most excited by the fact that they're continuing, which I think everybody is. Yes. Um, some uh, similar to what you said, I was reading through the comments and somebody made a, uh, a very good point that I completely missed. Um, Jonathan and Twistle hasn't been heard from in a while. Mm, that's true. Uh, but we hadn't heard anything from uh, Simon, Simon Bennett. Is that his last name? Yeah. We hadn't heard anything from Simon Bennett in a while either. And so it was kind of unclear what was going on. One, but that is odd. You're right. Um, one thing I heard, again, on Twitter, I, this person might have been called Ranger Danger. I should have written it down, but this is stuff I see throughout the day. And they said, this is, I have no insight, this is what they said. I have no inside knowledge, but a theory I have about this season that's coming up, the, the, the Cosmic Theory. Yeah. Is that their theory is that it will be the final season of Power Rangers as we know it, which has been said a few times. But the reason they're saying this is, they said, their belief based on everything they've seen and was that there was going to be another show. 
whether it was going to be the more adult oriented or whatever it was, there was going to be something else and it isn't ready. Whether because it took longer, because they had to fire someone, Ant Whistle not being around, maybe that's part of this theory. Um, and the idea was that because they knew they wouldn't have anything ready, they didn't want to have nothing for a year and they didn't want to have nothing for the 30th anniversary. So they said, well, we could just do another season like we've been doing, but instead of hiring all new cast and get figuring that all out, we'll just, we'll just roll the cast over. That'll be way easier. Got a lot of built-in storytelling and everybody knows the ropes and so just keep everybody on for another year, which they weren't going to do. And that's how we get this season. Now that is a little bit cynical and a little bit depressing to think that that's how it happened. I'll take it. I mean, if that, yep. if we got a good result for bad reasons, that's fine. But that does, I don't know, it just makes a lot of logical sense to me when it's laid out that way. Well, it's kind of one of those funny things. I hadn't heard that, so thank you for sharing. But it, it does have a lot of parallels because, like, you're, everything you're explaining, minus the adult-oriented stuff with Power Rangers and stuff, but, like, could be the end, is in space. Right. Like, the reason that they rolled over the cast and did it, they're like, this is probably the final one. Let's go. And then right. it's one of the most well-regarded seasons of Power Rangers. So if and this it, happened and it's yeah. the same thing, who and, knows? And if it's, and if it's uh, Kira Major, which is like an imagination magic-based one, but they make it space, once again, taking a season that wasn't space. And, you know, I, I, I'm excited for this season, no matter what. Even yes. Whether it's the last season or not, it's it's an interesting thing they're doing. They're doing something new. It's old, but it's new. Yeah. And... Like I said, we like the cast, and and you know, generally, it's a it's a good launching pad for the next thing. And yeah, I I had kind of resigned myself to we weren't getting another traditional season. So even if this is the last one, I feel it feels like a bonus. Yeah, I feel like with this, a lot of the complaints we've had with the Hasbro seasons is we're taking a lot of time to focus on this person because yeah. we haven't focused on them yet. And then sometimes it works really well. Like the, is and, then the and then the bad comedy we, we do complain. A lot yeah. About. And the bad comedy, whereas this, it's like, we know all of you yeah. go do, do yeah, cool stuff. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we are going to have a, a character focused, it'll be more development. It'll be bigger development. It won't be like learning how to be a ranger. It'll be like, Oh, I need to make some hard choices or, you know, step down as the leader or just some like real whatever, you know? Yeah. So um, everything yeah. about that's cool. Um, the only thing, I, I told you a lot of this over text, but um, kind of diving back into MorphCon, this was the first panel of the day. Mm -hmm. um, they let us in about 10 minutes early to the show so we could attend the panel, which uh, which was cool. Um, the first half was Dino Fury. Um, second half was Cosmic Fury. And the only downside was, like, the Cosmic Fury stuff, like, really was awkward. Well, also, before you get into that, didn't you say they confirmed it was a leak last night that it wasn't supposed to come out at midnight? They confirmed that at the end of the panel where it was supposed to come out in line with this panel and right. not last night like at they, lunch, like, yeah. they, like they would show the video at Power MorphCon as it went up on Twitter and everywhere else. Like it went up on – it was supposed to go up on Twitter, I think, as the panel started. Right. So yeah, it's like – Yeah. But the the Ranger actors, actors and actresses did say they learn a lot about – stuff through twitter like they didn't know about cosmic fury until it was on there and they like they didn't know the name of it or what like they knew like they when, the, when, the leak of, when the leak of the name happened yes they reached out to hasbro and were like hey is this true and they're like and surprisingly hasbro said yes do not comment on it it was like oh <laughs> all right so that like they didn't know about that when they were finishing season two they were told the last week of filming hey we might bring you back right just keep that out there. And then eight months later, they're like, you're coming back and we're doing this. And I'm guessing they had, I mean, presumably and hopefully the actors want to go back. Yes. I'm guessing that they had a contract where they had to, because what if, what if somebody got a job or decided not to go back? Like, you know, they fulfilled their two, two seasons. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess we'd see what would happen in that. Point. Yeah. So all six of them are coming back. Nice. And I'm going to tell you what, was said at the panel. I'm going to tell you what I think about the panel. Okay. So uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but the person who formerly ran Power Rangers Now hosted the Cosmic Fury part. Okay. And asked the questions, and every question he asked was not answered. Hmm. Which was did unfortunate. Ask, did he ask like questions that you know you're not going to get an answer to, or was it like, um, very vague? some? Some you would assume you're not going to get an answer to. Like, what do you think are some example questions that were asked? Um, what former Ranger actors might come back? 
No, didn't didn't go that far. He um, asked like who they would want to work with, given the opportunity, and everybody gave various answers, which was fair. Cool. Yeah, because hypothetical. Yeah. Um, a question. Well, do you know what Sentai is being adapted? Would be an obvious answer. Yeah. Um, is it going to be just one season or two seasons? Didn't ask that. I think it's only one though. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just trying to think. You said what would have been asked? No, like, no, I know. I'm I'm as you're answering those, I'm also answering the question. Uh, is, okay, here's one that they should be able to answer. Is it going to be Netflix exclusive again? Yes. Uh, and then are they going to drop huge chunks of episodes at a time? Didn't ask that, uh, but I would assume so. Right. Uh, um, but what what else? Are the are you getting a matching color for the new team? Uh, right. Didn't answer. Is when it based on the same player based on something original? Didn't answer. Right. Uh, are there any returning villains? Um, they didn't say that, but they kind of were like, they kind of said the reason that the Rangers are up is like the Rangers are coming back, and that's what we can say. Wait, the, the Rangers, say that again? The, the So in the beginning, in the first one I showed you, Void Knight and Void Queen's actors and actresses were on the panel. And then for Cosmic uh, Fury, it was just these four. Uh, well, that makes sense because then, well, presumably they're not coming back as villains. Yeah. There's been talk of Void Knight, especially if it's a Q Ranger where they have more suits to fill, of the Void Knight coming back as a, a proper Ranger. But if they were going to do that, they probably wouldn't want him to be on the panel because it would spoil the surprise. Exactly. So that one, it's like, watch next month and you'll find out. Um, I think a lot of stuff they said um, will either be hinted at or will make more sense once it comes out. Right. Um, so uh, we haven't talked too much about it in a while, but uh, we may have a different way that we're going to review the next season just so we don't get spoiled. Um, yeah. But we haven't confirmed stuff yet offline. Right. Well, it's going to – yeah, because they're going to drop all of the episodes at once, I'm assuming. And we've already gotten a few spoilers. The good, the good news is – and again, spoilers if you're pure, but anyone that's watching this probably knows Lord Zed's coming back. Yeah. That was a thing where like the trailer – kind of spoiled it but it had already been spoiled so it's like one of those things where like okay well that's already out there um but yeah once people start watching the episode people seem to love to not just talk about it where you could kind of avoid it but put like a huge picture that is a visual spoiler and like post it everywhere publicly people love to do that like the minute it comes out yeah uh, and that's unfortunate not all people but one is enough you know yeah, um, like what what we had done in the past is for beast morphers it, it wasn't going to release in the U S for like months. Right. So we watched one at a time and reviewed them based on where we could just find the episodes. And, and but we, we also did, did it pretty quickly. Like I think we were, we were, we weren't, we were putting the reviews out one at a time, but sometimes we we're doing two reviews a night and just trying to yeah. get like in a week or two, we got through of all of them and then just released the episodes. So um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I I'm curious, everybody's opinion. Would you rather us record a bunch of the episodes, one off review things in chunks only focus on like pivotal episodes as their own standalone, kind of like we did with SPD or like something that we haven't listened. I'm going to be fully transparent. We're not going to do that if you give a certain suggestion, but I am curious how you I'm would. Curious too. I, my, review. my gut is that we, we're going to have, we, we've done every single episode of the two most current seasons. So if there's whatever, like 11, 12 episodes left, I, I don't see any point in skipping some of them. You know, we might as well just go through. Yeah. The real question would be is if we watch them all at once, like you and me just watch them and then go back and review them because we're not going to be able to watch and review. That, all that's what them. I was going to say. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those cases, unfortunately, which we can go into weekly versus all at once binge watching model with Netflix and a different, video but i don't i don't love it for this specific reason i like to marinate with the show we'll, we'll come back to that though uh, let's yeah. let's go back to morphicon um yeah um so let's see so there was that panel oh um what sorry go ahead oh there was that panel it wrapped um it was cool to get hyped for cosmic fury it was also like not very hype where like <laughs> Nobody would answer anything either because right. they knew and they lied and they said they didn't know or they honestly didn't know and like there's no way of answering. I imagine that. a lot of nervous laughter. And like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like I I don't know and it's like I I want to believe you, but like to me it's like if you can't talk about it, say you can't talk about it, or say you honestly don't know. And I was getting a little bit of both, so I'm not sure. Um, I typically am not a fan of lying, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm okay with it because it's not lying. It's fulfilling a contract obligation and trying to keep the, the mystery alive. 
like with Spider-Man, uh, was it No Way Home that had the three of them? Yep. Like Andrew Garfield was always out there like, no, definitely not. Like, and I appreciate that because then, you know, like. It's Spoilers really for No Way Home if you haven't seen it. Well, I mean, at this point they're on TV and on the posters and everything. I, I know, know, I know, I'm just saying. Uh, but, but so like, if it is a thing, I, and I guess certain questions you could say, oh, I don't know. But certain it's like, I, I don't know, the denial, I, it doesn't bother me, I guess is what I'm saying. The easiest thing that everybody said, because I heard uh campbell cooley say this a lot in his booth where also for spoilers for the second half of the season scrozzle's back yes. so people would ask him a scrozzle question he'd just go you all have to watch and find out which is a right. fair answer in this instance yes. as opposed to oh no like if you honestly don't know that's fine well cool. and there is see the second half of season two of dino fury is filmed and coming out soon so campbell clearly knows what he filmed but from everything we've heard shooting has not yet begun on cosmic fury so they might actually not know because they haven't even filmed it yet and who knows if they even got scripts or anything but it's the blend that i didn't like like i couldn't tell if they honestly did not nitpicking. what was the next thing you did um after that i stayed in the same room for the boom comics panel okay. which um was a little light com in comparison just because it was packed for to not pack but i had a lot of fun with this i am not 100 percent caught up on the boom comics and this was more like not like here's what's coming out next it was more like the three of them commiserating because they're friends and they've all written for power rangers so in the was comics. It, was kyle is this kyle higgins here yes and then this is uh ryan parrot, ryan parrot and this is the the woman who's taking over melissa her. flores i believe is her name and if i'm wrong so i'm sorry this is just the moderator not just but this yes is the but he also works with them and i forget in what capacity okay so that is cool so it's sort of like generations like i started it I'm leaving it and I'm taking over. Yeah. And so I, they, I'll tell you what. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, it's exactly that. Like they went over stuff, they did a little inside baseball for it, and then they left it to audience questions. And um, I don't remember all the audience questions, but I asked one. And another cool thing they did is um, Kyle Higgins had um, variant covers for Radiant Black and Radiant Red which are right. part of the massive verse. And if you ask a question, he gave you two comics for free, which I wanted to ask a question anyway, but I was like, Oh, cool. Free comics. So, uh, I oh, asked oh, a question. You got your question asked. Yes. I was second in line. I, I oh. moved toward the front cause it wasn't very filled, unfortunately. So I literally was like second on the mic. Right. Um, but my question second was on the bike, the big dog's here. He's going to rock you on a bike. Two wheel of style. He's popping at large. He's gonna ask a question. He's in charge. Get radiant black issues one and two. Ooh, They're ooh. free for him, not you. And for, well, we really hey, care. that was pretty good. It was sixteen and seventeen, but close. <laughs> um, but I asked a question that mostly Ryan and Kyle could answer, and um, Melissa couldn't for most reasons. But I was like, out of all of the ideas that like were pitched or shot down or didn't like go to fruition, what are like some that like you can bring up that are definitely like not a thing. Right. And one thing that Kyle Higgins brought up is he said, um, and I haven't read power Rangers universe, so I don't know the official, but I know it's not what I'm about to share. Right. Um, he said at the end of shattered grid, like everything still matters, but like a lot of people don't remember what happened. So he said he wanted to kind of combine like certain aspects of characters and he had a plan for phantom ranger where because of the way shattered grid happened um alex from time force was going to be like reincarnated again and remember everything that happened and become the phantom ranger now with that he would have always been the phantom ranger but to ensure that like certain things in time didn't happen he couldn't reveal himself and like did kind of the rest of what Phantom Ranger does. I'm like, that's awesome. I also know for sure that's not what's in Power Rangers universe now. Right. But that is a cool idea where it wouldn't break anything that had come before, but just add a little nuance to it. Yeah. So that was a cool one. I think that was the only answer that I can remember, if at all, because the rest were like, like Ryan Perry was like, I got to do pretty much everything and it was great. Yeah. And, and uh, Melissa was like, yep, uh, this is big shoes to fill and I'm nervous, but like, Everything worked out, and it's great. And context for her, she worked for Saban slash Hasbro on Power Rangers for, like, 10 years. On the show, so, yeah, that I knew. No, well, also with the comics. Like, she worked with them oh, as, like, okay. somebody who was, like, giving them Wait, notes did for the comics. The show, though, or am I wrong about that? I don't think so. I think she was I, more, like... Oh, I guess I was misinformed then. Um, Hang on one sec. 
Um, there we go. I don't know how much um, longer we could go with this. No, 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 we can a little bit. Um, I just wanted to send over a message to somebody. Um, so that panel was cool. Um, after that, uh, I roamed the floor for the rest of the day. I didn't go to any more panels. And uh, from what I had heard from everybody, like the Dino Fury panel in the beginning of the day left the con floor pretty much dead. And then, like, after that, and I, I forget what other panel there was that was really big. Like, everybody kind of flooded back. Um, so I went to the uh, comic area again and got some signatures and ended up talking to Ryan Parrott about comics for, like, a solid half hour. Jeez. Was it was he, awesome. Was that busy or you just talked as he signed? No, it was a little bit busy. But, like, I I went when I went over, there was nobody there. So um, two two things happened. He was, uh, throughout the weekend, unfortunately, I knew at the very end, he was selling different items for uh, charity. It was either for a charitable organization or for charity for, like, a specific cause. I don't remember specifically, unfortunately. But in doing so, I was able to support charity and get these four figures that I want, three of which I don't have, and the fourth, which goes to Gazbot. Hey! Yeah, that's that's awesome. To get a good deal on figures and it goes to charity is super win. Yeah, everything about it was great. He was super stoked about it. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I got this commission done. It was by Sean Cochran on Instagram. He is Shawnee underscore red underscore comet. And uh, yeah, so I got this. Um, I have a lot of the uh, blank covers from Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin where they put right. out one that was a different color. Uh, yeah. So I plan on eventually filling out the roster once I get more. Did you but, choose the subject, or or was it pre-done? Or how, how I did, did you... yeah. I just said, can you make Omega Ranger? He's like, I haven't done that before, but it looks really cool. I was like, cool, I'll get it tomorrow. And uh, got it, and then I brought it over to Ryan, and uh, he signed it. And he's like, oh, did you just get this done? I was like, yeah. Oh, he's like, oh, that's awesome. Signed it. We were chatting. I, you know, I got the figures. He was super stoked by that talking about comics and stuff. And I was like, Hey, I see you're doing remarks. Um, can I do, can I get a remark from your character rogue son? And he's like, Oh, I haven't done that before. Like, do you mind if I like practice a couple of times? I was like, sure. So he's like, okay. And, um, I'm not really talking to him cause I can tell he's focusing, but like he draws on a little post-it note mm -hmm. and, uh, he does it there in black, and then he does it again in silver. He's like, is this okay? I'm like, dude, whatever you put is fine. Like, yeah. everything looks good. So then he did it on here, nice. and he's like, is that okay? And I was like, yeah, dude, that's great. Thank you so much. I was like, full transparency, this is in my stack of comics to read, and I haven't read it yet, but, like, I'm very excited by the Massiverse stuff. He's like, oh, no worries. And then uh, at the end, he he stuck this on here, which I noticed, like, right at the end. I'm like, oh, I kind of got two. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, free, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I didn't get the other one. Oh, you didn't get the silver one? No, I didn't. He, he just stuck this on at the end after we were talking. I was like, oh, cool. Um, he also had comics for sale there, some variants and stuff. And I uh, now I need to complete the team. But I got two uh, Virgin Peach from Loco covers that he signed. Really good price. They were only 15 bucks each, and he signed them. Like, I was but very If you complete the team, you mean you want four more? Uh. So this is the weird thing. I don't think they released all of Omega or all of Mighty Morphin. Oh. But like, I'm going to just try to get all the Peach Momoko right. ranking covers like this. Gotcha. I, I have most of them already. There's just a handful I didn't get. So got um, those. I got some Turtle Ranger comics signed by him. And uh, the one I have where Shredder's holding the Jason helmet that's all cracked. He's like, I think this one's like really expensive, by the way. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I thought the... The other one is uh, with Draken or the White Ranger. He's like, oh, I think you're right. But, like, either way, this is still a good one. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so he signed those. We are talking about that. And then I forget, like, how it all just kind of rolled. But, like, we were just talking about comics for a while. Um, Michael, who I interviewed, his interview's up right now if you haven't watched yeah. it. He comes up. He's like, oh, Big Dog, what's going on? I was like, oh, just getting some comics signed. He came up. And uh, he was talking to He's like, oh, what's this? And and Ryan told him about Rogue Son. And I'm like, thank you for asking because I didn't know, but I don't want to be like rude and ask. <laughs> now that I and it's in front of me. And uh, it's a really cool concept. Um, it's another massive verse character. And he was saying like, I'm not telling you not to read these comics in front of me, but like, here's some like 
mild behind the scenes spoilers were like technically you don't need to read this special to jump into the series and i'm like well i want to read it anyway and i have it all but uh he was saying rogue son is a mantle and in super massive there's one person who is rogue son and then in the series proper it's their son okay but they have a tumultuous relationship so like part of the like coming of age of it it seems like and the problems that are dealt with by the second rogue son is like why did i get picked out of all of your kids when you and i don't see eye to eye kind of the, and it's like this whole thing and this is only like scratching the surface and i haven't read it and it made me want to read it that much more he's like you can just jump into it i was like good so uh <laughs> michael was also talking about he has a comic he's creating right now and then just asked him a bunch of like oh, okay. just comic and writing related like things like what would you recommend for somebody getting into comics with and he was just like going and going he's like sorry if i'm rambling guys i'm like please just keep talking <laughs> i'm here this. <laughs> yeah. this is great this is just huge like and just hearing like what he recommended there was uh uh some videos he recommended one of them was uh uh pixar's like 22 lessons to writing i think is what it was called yeah yeah i know the one you mean. storytelling yeah and then the other one was uh i forget what it was but it was like watching the south park team make episodes and it was like how when it comes to when it comes to making stories um instead of having each piece like this happened and this happened and this happened changing all the ants to so's and buts yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah 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 but this happened so and like doing it that way and he right. just had all this knowledge unfortunately i'm not remembering most of it just because i'm kind of tired but it was it was awesome like being able to gush about comics with him and bringing up things I liked in the comic. I'm, he's like, yeah, and I really wanted to do this. I'm like, oh, I really appreciated when you did this with Zordon and this. And he was saying, like, he met David Fielding at previous cons. And, like, he's a super nice guy and stuff. And he's like, yeah, like, Zordon didn't get to do anything. So, like, I made the arc, the Altarian War, where Zordon gets to be involved with everyone. And we get right. to see his backstory and all this. And he's like, I partially did that for him of, like, your character gets to do some stuff. And I'm like, that's <laughs> great. Like, we were just talking about all this stuff. And it, it was really cool. And Kyle Higgins was next to us. And he was chiming in here and there because they're really good friends. And, like, everything was great. And then uh, all that went well. And then I was able to... Uh, get uh, an additional time to talk to them, which all will be revealed. Uh, it's not an interview. It's not an interview. But uh, but you guys will see later down the line. And yeah, uh, everything was awesome uh, with them. One of the highlights of my show was just That's standing awesome. with him talking about comics. And I told him straight up, I'm like, this is this made my day. Like, yeah. I'm here for Power Ranger stuff. I'm a fan, but like, I also love comics. And like, you're one of the few creators I've got to meet that like, it shows how much you love it. And like, right. and, you, and you didn't just meet them like for a signature and a handshake. You got to actually have a conversation about the thing. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that like, and I don't know if you felt this ever, mm -hmm. but like sometimes when you go to co comic convention specifically and you go to the yet thing signed, especially if it's a number one, especially if it's a rare comic, like sometimes fairly, in my opinion, like some of the creators kind of have a preconceived notion because some people go, want to get signed, want it to be graded so they can sell it later for more. Yeah, yeah. And like for me, I didn't do it for this, but like a lot of times uh, certain creators, uh, this happened to me at San Diego Comic-Con in 2019, they're like, a signature is $10, a personalized signature is a dollar. And I'm like, this comic is for me and I want to meet you and like I'm not trying to flip this. I, I, like, I like that policy, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. And, and I wish more people would do it and A, to save me money and B, yeah. so I could show like no, like, I just like your stuff. I want right. to meet you. Like, I'm not trying to flip this. I've also seen, and granted, this is a couple of years ago, uh, some certain creators, I think Chris Claremont was doing this, where it was like, the first thing is free, or the first five things are free, and then I start charging. Because it's like, if you want me to sign 100 books, I'm going to charge you. But like, if you just got one yeah. or two, sure, you know? Yeah, every show is different. Every person has their own policy. But like, yeah. you know, being able to get a bunch of stuff signed, getting remarks from both of them was really cool. And again, the conversation was the highlight for me outside of this stuff that I'm going to get. I'm sorry I keep yawning at you. I find this very interesting. I'm just very tired. No worries. <laughs> I know you're tired too, but. I, I'm on that like so tired. I'm like, not delirious, but I like. I had a normal day where I'm tired. You had an exhausting day where you're tired, but you're also like, look at all this cool stuff that happened. Blah, yeah. blah. And then at, like at some point you're just going to fall over and be done. Yeah. That was, that was the bulk of the afternoon. I got a couple more shout outs from people. Um, and honestly just roamed the floor a lot. 
Um, I don't even of, know all the shout outs he got for you, for you people at home. Like, yeah. Um, for me, uh, some like, like he put up that reaction video last night. That was crazy. I woke up and there was a reaction video on my channel. Like what? Let's see it. You know, like yeah. it's fun. It's fun. I like, I like that you're kind of grabbing and doing. And, yeah. You know. We both got to share the experience, even though we were in two separate places. I feel like we both got like a lot of the hype, 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 yeah, hype. Yeah. You had the late night and I had the early morning. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, uh, Unfortunately, a lot of people were cutting out early today. I had heard, and I don't know this for a fact, there's a rumor that um, most of the actors that were flown in um, weren't given an extra night in the hotel. So a bunch of them flew out like today slash this afternoon. So a bunch of people packed up early. And uh, so there were, there were a couple people I planned on meeting, but I can all meet them at a different con at a later date it wasn't like one thing i realized talking to you you met a lot of um like indie toku people and the comic people and you talked to campbell cooley did you and i'm not talking about interview but just mm. all the rest of the ranger actors did you meet get a signature get a photo talk to any other like main I, did, I, I did talk to a fair amount i didn't get photos or signatures from any though yeah. there were a couple i was on the fence of doing and either the line was too long they left or every time I went by, they were at like a panel or something. Um, but again, some of these uh, actors, I might plan on meeting at a different con. So it wasn't like, oh, this is my only chance for two years. But uh, but again, like kind of, you know, encompassing just the whole weekend because we've done multiple of these. Like it was just it was just really cool. Like I, I didn't feel like I needed to in order to like make my time there worth it, if it makes right. sense. Yes. Like it wasn't like I had a mental checklist of like I need this, this, and this to happen. Well, there are a couple things, but that's <laughs> offline stuff. Um, but like no, it, it, I felt very fulfilled. It was very cool, and then I did my final laps and and got a couple more things that I'll show that Gazmat doesn't totally know about. Um, the, the one I do know about because I have a picture of it right yes. here. Yeah. So um, Toe Collectible, shout out to them. They were doing all weekend where they had this uh, big old wheel. If you followed them on two forms of social media, you got a spin. And it was like, you get a cup, you get something out of the freebie bin, you get like a t shirt. Like it was always different stuff. So they had this bin of like freebie stuff. And it was the last like hour, hour and a half of the con. And I was like, uh, and I like building model kits. And I have mostly for uh, Sentai like figures of this size. And, uh, I was like, oh, like, do you guys have any more of the uh, Super Mini Plus stuff? And they're like, oh, all we have is this. And I'll grab it. I ended up getting it. Um, and it's for Gone uh, Brothers. And it's the full set where I can, I have all the pieces and I get to build um, this Red's Mecha gotcha. and have like different like pieces I can put in from like different set type. Full transparency, I haven't watched it, but like based on this like i get i have all these i have all the right. necessary kit pieces right um, so i got that and then i looked at the bin and i was like oh like how much are these oh that was the freebie bin i'm like oh like what would it be if i wanted to get them he's like take them all i was like what people. yeah i was like what and he's like it's one last thing i have to pack and it was in the freebie yeah. bin anyway i was like thank you so much so i got uh i got those three and i was very stoked because i i really wanted um two kaiser um mm -hmm. I love the design. I, I want some representation of it. And then the other guys, I'm like, oh, these are little cronies. I, I'm assuming he fights. And they I'm had those. They were like foot soldiers this season. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm getting out of it. So, uh, uh, so yeah, it was really nice of them to let me get that. They were super generous, and, super cool. And I actually, uh, I shopped from Toe Collectibles. I, bought a bunch I, of I have before as well. Yeah, they so. were, they were also the only booth where, um, that's where I took the picture of the power swords. They had just like a ton of stuff out of like please don't take it but play with it so oh, they had like yeah. a three zero lord drac in there they had the different dawn brothers mecca like all this stuff and it's like just try before you buy kind of scenario. exactly it was, and i didn't i didn't play with it but they had that like super deformed uh dino fury red that i've determined i don't want to buy i don't think i've seen that actually um i you have you just don't remember because it's like forgettable because we both don't want it yeah okay but it's like a little like chibi dino fury red right um, but yeah, the, like super cool there. And then I went back to the, uh, the Japanese, uh, Sentai mostly booth that had stuff. And, uh, I got something for a, a DIY project for myself. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I know what you're going to do. I'm yep. going to take that and put it with all the rest of the memorabilia for your favorite Operation season. Operation Overdrive is my favorite season. Close. Oh. But no. Um, I have heard, and I've mostly seen this for SPD, that right. a lot of people who customize Lightning Collection figures will get the Sofubi and cut off like all of the extra stuff and put it on as accessories. Yeah, I could see that working. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm yelling really so much. I'm sorry. The only unfortunate part is this Sofubi is actually in pretty good condition. It's not like crazy beat up. Right. This was a dollar. Wow. I would buy almost any Ranger Sofubi for a dollar. Yeah, he looks great, but it's going to look even better when I cut this off and put it on a different Ranger. So it was, uh, <laughs> That's cool. it was interesting. I've been wanting to do that for a while, but outside of like these shows, I'm like, where am I going to find like right. not expensive Sofubi? Because even if you found it cheap online for like five bucks plus five bucks to ten bucks, like, uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't like mangling figures to begin with, but for a dollar, I'm willing to try. I know, and it's, it's if your favorite season, possibly your favorite Ranger from that season. You, it's I know it's, it's tough, insane, but, but yeah. that was uh, that was the end of what I can think of. Uh, again, every. The weekend was cool. I met a lot of cool people. I got to finally connect uh, in person with a bunch of people I know from online. And, uh, and yeah, it was cool. I look forward to the next one. I love. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to this week seeing everybody else's updates just because I've seen some, but I haven't, like, done it's a deep like dive. When you go to Comic-Con, people tell you stuff that's happening there that you don't even know because you're there. Like, yeah. Yeah, or it's like, oh, did you know this happened? It's like, you were there. How did you not know? It's like, I had no idea they dropped a trailer for this thing. Right, because you're not looking at your phone and it wasn't in the panel you happened yeah. to be in at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So did you run into any other um uh I don't want to use I guess content creator. I didn't want to use that term, but like any other Power Ranger internet people like us. Yeah. Um I did um some I kind of talked to in passing. Uh, and have no idea who I am. Uh, but I saw uh, Chris, they were, though, is the important thing. Yes, I saw Chris Cantata Force a couple times. Uh, talk to him. He's a, a super cool guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, uh, Estee. I remember, I remember we met him. I want to say in like 2016 at like a Target when we were looking for toys. We were, and, yeah. And it was like right. I guess maybe that was his first time in America. So we're like, hey, aren't you Cantata Force? Do you know who I am? Whereas now, obviously, everybody would. But he was like surprised we knew who he was. Yeah. Now, he was cool to see and talk to. Um, saw Bruno and Mia. They actually had a booth, but uh, I didn't end up talking to them. Just saw them. Uh, Este, uh, I had met in 2018, and then uh, ATO Worldwide knew both of us. He's like, oh, do you guys know each other? I was like, actually, I, I remember you from this guy. He's like, oh, I kind of remember you too. And we were supposed to link up, and I was supposed to talk to him longer, but we both were just doing so many different things. It didn't pan out. Uh, so Andre... Black Nerd Comedy, but didn't get a chance to talk to him. He was super swamped all the time in, like, the best way. Um, That's great. You love to hear that. Hold on. Uh, Hi, what's up? I'm Andre from the YouTube channel Black Nerd Comedy. Eddie, the Blue Ranger on Power Rangers Hyperforce, and you're watching Power Rangers Action Activate. Now, the reason I put that up, because you're talking about him, yeah. I've met him two or three times now, not where he'd remember me. Every time he's been super busy, and every time he's been very polite and friendly and generous with this time. And that was no exception. That was at San Diego Comic-Con where he was at the boom booth and he was, he wasn't even doing it. Like he was there meeting someone like he wasn't working. And I was like, could I please? And he did it. And what kills me is, you know, he has that laugh. And at that point he put it down. I thought he was done. And then he was like, Haha, like I can't do his laugh. But he did his laugh. And I'm like, thank you. Why did I stop the camera right then? Yeah. I actually it, told that story to people. <laughs> it's the worst, but it, yeah, but he's great. Um, who else? Obviously, Extended Universe got to... Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't know where the picture went, but uh, Psycho Green Mark you saw there. Yeah, yeah, I saw Mark. Got to catch up with him. Uh, he's another one. Super nice guy. He was actually working as uh, Serena Vincent's assistant, so I only saw him like for five minutes today. Um, it's good to have a Psycho Ranger as your assistant. So I know, exactly, right? Um, so he he was like, oh, come on our, and every time she had like a massive line when I looked, I was like, now's not the time for me to be like, hey, thanks for introducing me. Um, <laughs> but he's like, yeah, you should come by. I'm like, for sure. And every time it was like swamp, swamp, swamp. Uh, um, I mean, it's good for her though. I mean, yeah. it's for us. Um, Meta, uh, or reconnected with a couple other Ranger actors um, that you'll see when you, uh, you guys will see and everybody else will see the more we post videos. Um, and then, yeah, that's all I can really think of. I did. I think I put this up before, but that's who we were just talking about. That's Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, like 
um, it's insane. I, I hope in the future to be able to meet some more of the Dino Fury cast when they aren't the, the main. Season. Yeah. Cause that was the thing. Like I would have loved to meet a bunch of them and like, they were just swamped constantly. Swamped. Yeah. Had a proposal happen. They brought, in, they had, uh, I forgot to mention during the panel, uh, Hunter Denno actually was like, and then if you're here, can you please stand up? They had a proposal. It was such a great moment, and I'm glad we're all – and let's all give it up for them again. I was like, that's, oh, that's so nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh, uh, final thing, and then I think I'm done. Uh, yeah. The During the Dino Fury panel, they brought up, I believe, their name was Kyler, and Kyler had battled uh, cancer – uh, and was diagnosed in 2020 and has now beaten it. And they brought Kyler up and uh, it was like the most positive thing that I think happened all of Morphcon. That's so awesome. The loudest so cheers. Loud the loudest cheers. And also I forget who prompted it. I, it was probably Hunter because she was so involved, but she was like, you want to do your morph in front of everybody for us? Like, let's do it. And brought them out front. I was like, yeah, it's, and put the little mic up. It's morphin time. Ah! And like, <laughs> insane. Everybody That's just so went sad. wild. It was, it was awesome to see, but, uh, yeah, but, really? take it, but I can't. So no, that's, that's, uh, that's it for me. Uh, that's awesome. I look, I look forward to, uh, you know, finding out more news in the coming the coming week. I, I look forward to seeing pictures that you haven't even and videos that you haven't even sent me yet. Uh, and I, yeah, I look forward to the new season and I look forward to two years from now when hopefully we can go there together. Yes. I look forward to that. But uh, in the short term, only one more month until we get to talk about Dino Fury episodes again. Uh, don't know what we're going to do in the meantime, but uh, Oh, this is an expectation I want to set. Yeah. We have never posted more than we have in the last week. It's the are, most content ever. We are going to slow down yes. after this week. Yes, we are. We have a couple things in the tank, so you're going to get a little more than normal, but yes. like, you're not getting like four videos a day like you've been getting. No. I hope you've enjoyed them. We've enjoyed yes. making them. Yes. We literally don't have enough content to do that. No, and and the only, and the or energy or time of the day, part of it was because yeah. you were there and I was not, and I had some free time, so it was like he was getting the content and I was posting the content. Yeah, but we – We'll definitely have a few more things going up, uh, and then we'll probably go back to our regular once a week ish schedule. Yeah. yeah. But until next time, I've been Gasbot. I have been the big dog, and to the power. See you guys later. All right. No credits this time, just an explosion. <laughs>